Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. Do you want to relive those retro gaming glory days, but want the convenience of a massive library on the go? All you gotta do is bake yourself a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is nothing new. It's an extremely compact computer that was released in 2012 and was designed to teach children how to program. Since then, a lot of people have adapted different uses for it, and we plan to use pretty much one of the most interesting ones we think that there are. A GAME CONSOLE! <laughs> we primarily want to use the Raspberry Pi as an emulator to play games from the Nintendo 64 and PS1 era and earlier. We're going to focus primarily on stability and frame rate, but we also want to figure out using original controllers how closely we can emulate the feel of the original consoles. We've never used a Raspberry Pi before, but it seems pretty straightforward, so we're just going to jump in and throw this thing together. La la, la la la. La la, la la la. <laughs> We're just uh, pulling the Raspberry Pi. This is actually really interesting. I have never worked with one of these at all. I didn't even know that it was like a thing to do a console with this until Josh like basically beat me over the head with the idea of doing a video of this, so. This is your Raspberry Pi. Now, I'll let me tell you a little bit about this model. This is, this is the Raspberry Pi 2B, isn't it? Well, I think it's the 2B. Raspberry Pi Model B 2, I think. Yeah, Model B 2. Um, and what that means is all the other Raspberry Pis have a single core processor. This one has a quad core processor and it's clocked at a higher rate of 900 megahertz, which may not seem like a lot, but if you think about it, for something this small, that's pretty amazing. It's got four USB ports, it's got a LAN connection, uh, Ethernet. It's got, uh, I think this is a headphone jack. Is that it's yep. a headphone jack? And then it's also got a uh, HDMI plug and it's also got an SD card slot, I think. I, I That's where all the memory comes from. It's all gotta be, it's, oh, uh, oh, I believe it's micro SD. Micro SD, oh, and it has a micro USB charging port. So th that's that. Um, we got this cute little like pink and white case. It's adorable. Um, just pops open like that. We have this little pad. Don't know what it's for. I'm guessing these side panels come off too. Similarly, yeah, it looks like they're just clipped in there, so. Ooh, look at that. Um, I'm assuming that you put the case on first. All you need to get a Raspberry Pi going, a Raspberry Pi computer working, is the Raspberry Pi itself, the AC power adapter, which is converted via micro USB, um, and a micro SD card. That is literally all you need. And the Raspberry Pi itself, this is the top of the line model and it was $35. So that's a pretty good deal for a computer. It's no Core i7, but it'll get the job done for things like gaming consoles, hopefully. That's what we're testing. This I'm pretty sure, actually, I'm, I, there's no explanation in any of the pamphlets we were given, but I'm pretty sure these are just rubber standoffs that you put at the bottom of the case. Another thing to note, guys, that this is that makes this pretty interesting is most of your modern computers have fans. This is a completely fanless solution, so it's literally silent computing, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Now I think you just slap this sucker in here. A little concerned because it almost looks like there should be screws in this back one, but the, these back two holes, but there's not. There's no like you can tell on these top ones. There's actually plastic sticking through to hold it on, whereas these back ones, there's nothing there, but it's not moving, not even coming close to moving at all. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Uh, by the way, there are lots of different cases available. Josh just wanted a pink one for some reason. I think he thought it was red, and he also says it looks gamey. That's what he says. This is- I stand by that. <laughs> this has got to be, he can stand by that. That's fair enough, I'll give him that. But this has got to be the easiest computer build I've ever done. <laughs> Easiest by far, and I've done a lot of computer builds. Now, do we need to put the SD card in before we assemble it? Do you think? Is it, Actually, is yeah, it I'm pretty certain. I'm pretty outside? certain we do. No, I'm pretty certain you're right. We have to install the SD card. So now I have to disassemble this entire computer. Ah, oh, hours and hours of hard work gone to waste. We are opening up the SD card and we're about to install the operating system on it. We're going to be using Emulation Station, which is a front end for RetroPie. We are going to be using Retro Pie Baker. 
which is what you use to format an SD card on a Mac. Prep for noobs. I'm guessing hit OK. Yeah. And then preparations complete. Then go to restore backup. Okay, I hit open. It doesn't show the image. Oh, it's it's thinking. It's got the spinning pinwheel of death. In the meantime, while that's formatting, we will be opening up our USB 2.0 wireless adapter, Wi-Fi adapter. Um, neither of us are really sure if this will work right out of the box, but it's what people were ordering on Amazon. And so with their Raspberry Pi, so that's why we ordered it and we'll make it work. It'll work. It'll work. Okay, our card is ready, so just hit okay. Assuming we can close out of this program. We've got our operating system on our SD card now. We're gonna start the assembly, and hopefully this shouldn't take too much longer. Let's get things underway. <laughs> so apparently you didn't have to disassemble it to put the SD card in. There's a little hole in the back. Okay, now we need to plug in our power adapter, which is just a micro USB. And guys, it doesn't look any different than your standard phone charger. I mean, that's that's all the power that it requires, which is pretty impressive, considering most computers take very large power supplies in order to be powered properly. We, I don't know how to turn it on. Maybe, oh, maybe it's on by default and you just have to turn the television on. So a quick Google search shows us that the action of plugging it in is actually what turns it on. And we are trying to prove that theory correct. Oh, look at that. There we go. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is so pretty. It's even got raspberries. <laughs> Overall, actually, this feels very, very similar to the original controllers, so that's really good. Um, the biggest thing is going to be seeing how it performs, how it, the reaction is on the computer screen or television screen compared to the originals, because that's the biggest problem I run into when using retro remakes is even if the controller feels good, the response on the television is the problem. So that's one thing we're really interested in finding out is how close we can get to that original console feel. I don't know if we want to use the controller to configure this for the keyboard. I think it's designed to use a controller. Okay, so let's, let's, it says no games detected. That's not good. Oh wait, hold the button. Uh, so you're gonna go down here. So we're having a little bit of trouble configuring this correctly, so. Oh, balls, what did I, I didn't. All right, we finally got it working. Okay. We're running into technical difficulty upon technical difficulty right now. I've just reformatted this thing five times. It would stop booting. Uh, it was crashing a lot. The sound was not working. Only just now, after two and a half hours, did I get the sound to work. It took me a long time to figure out how to actually get the games onto it. This is obviously a very technical process and I don't think it's gonna be for everybody. But now that we've actually got it working, uh, me and Matt are gonna kick back and try to play some games and we'll see how it runs. You want to start off with uh, Mario Kart? Ah, sure, why not? So we got a little graphical glitching. A little. And, okay. It crashed. Okay, so Mario Kart 64 is a new go. Let's try Smash Bros. So my controls are messed up. I forgot to configure the Z key, so we can't shield, but the... This game is obviously running at a higher resolution than the original, and it's it's really smooth. This is really smooth, really clear. It, and the I, the graphics look better. All, in all honesty, the uh, whoa, the um, the shadows are very very crisp. I like it a lot. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh that's cool. What? Oh, you can jump again. Oops, oh, I paused. Oh, did I get hurt? I did.
Don't drop the shell. <laughs> isn't it? Wasn't it down B or something? Yes. Alright, okay. Oh, yeah. Nope. Nope. No one likes you, Professor Oak. Shut up. Guys, throughout the rest of the game, every <laughs> you know what's weird is I was about to suggest that. <laughs> like before you started typing. <laughs> Pretty much concludes our tests. We went through a lot of hoops just to get this thing working. Didn't even finally get it working completely, but the gameplay was a very enjoyable experience and I think that if you have a lot of time and some programming knowledge, you may be able to take advantage of this very nifty little thing. I, I think it ran great in a lot of ways and really bad in a lot of others. I mean, it is an emulator, so by their very nature, they're going to be glitchy. Um, and this is a very underpowered system. Interestingly enough, in the N64 games, uh, the menus are basically non-functional. They're very glitchy. But once you get into the game, they're smoother than the original system by far. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic gameplay. We actually couldn't get a lot of the N64 games to work. In fact, I think the only one we got to work was Smash Brothers. We got Mario Kart to work once. Yeah, and I'm gonna work on that in the future. I'm confident that with some tweaking, from what I've seen online, I can get a lot more games to run, uh, but this is what we've got today. There's a chance it could be thermal throttling. We overclocked our system, and we don't know if it is intentionally downclocking itself in order to compensate for the heat that it's producing. Uh, it's very possible that we're just crashing because we're running it too hot, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we, we actually built this thing because we wanted to play with it too, so we're gonna play with it more uh, in the coming weeks and look for updates on Twitter. You can follow us at, at TechTestedYT. If we find anything else worth reporting about on this subject, you'll find it on our Twitter page. As far as recommendations go, this gets a little bit iffy because someone like me, I'm a much more hardware-based enthusiast. For me, what Josh went through to get this thing working I would just throw, I would have thrown it out the window, personally. You're gonna have to be comfortable in a terminal and kind of know how to research your own problems online and troubleshoot them as they come, but there are gonna be a lot of problems. It's not flawless, but it has fantastic gameplay when it is working, and I think ultimately you can flesh out most, if not all, of the bugs. The resolution on the N64, amazing! Oh my goodness, that was awesome. I Seriously, guys? The gameplay for Super Smash Brothers was superior to the N64 experience. That's all we've got. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.